this month. After a string of champagne launches, cup teams have gone rather coy about their machines. So we lift the lid on the new America's Cup class boats. It's crunch time in Miami. We head to the Caribbean for a 600 mile classic. Plus we ask why the Finn is still such an appealing boat for a new breed of sailors. But first, going overboard. It's every offshore sailor's nightmare. I almost died. I need to talk about this. Conrad Coleman's solo trip around the world was much more than a yacht race. He'd sold everything to compete in the world's toughest sporting challenge, the Vendée Globe, racing 24,000 miles alone. Oh, man. Things I do. But like many of the 29 skippers, he had his share of problems. If you thought you were having a bad day, just look at mine. There is a way out of this, but... Man, I really wish we hadn't done this. Just one of the many wipeouts caused by repeated autopilot failures. But in 110 days, he had coped with plenty of other emergencies. A fire started below decks. Equipment had broken above decks, forcing him to climb the mast on several occasions. This is the thing that I hate. Leading to periods of real fear. It was, it was terrifying. So when the 33-year-old New Zealander crossed the finish line aboard his battle-scarred Imoka 60, he had achieved his dream. He had bucked the odds and added his name to a list of solo circumnavigators, a list that is shorter than for those that have been into space. He had also become the first Kiwi to complete the Vendée Globe and the first to do so without using any fossil fuels. <laughs> Yet Coleman's trip had taken him perilously close to the edge. Losing his mast 700 miles from the finish had jeopardized his entire campaign in the final straits. He'd run out of food and was struggling to make water. Starvation was now a real possibility in a race that had already thrown a constant stream of obstacles in his path. There were definitely several, several times that I thought that uh, there was too much, that it was impossible, that I couldn't finish. And yet, having that moment of, of self-doubt was, was what drove me to find the energy to, to make sure that that wasn't my destiny. Look at this! We're not dead yet! Woohoo! That was a tough day. I was afraid that maybe that was the end of the race. And while I've lost a whole day of sailing and one really useful sail, Onwards we go. Verbalizing that allowed me to say, no, no. <laughs> I haven't done all of this work. I haven't changed my life. I haven't gone across the Atlantic. I haven't moved to France. I haven't learned French. I haven't created an entire new life. I haven't cried at my desk trying to find sponsors. I haven't done two races around the world in preparation for this moment to have it fall apart right now. But Coleman was to come close to not returning at all. The most terrifying moment was not the dismasting. That was the night that I fell overboard. I had problems with the mainsail. I had to take it down at night in 35 knots of wind. I was in the process of taking the second reef when I had a problem with the main. I clambered up into the, into the, the lazy bag that, um, that was holding the the folds of the mainsail and was uh, sort of tugging it into place to, to try and uh, make sense of the mess that had been my once proud mainsail. The lazy jacks broke and that let uh, the boom slam down on the side of the boat. Uh, I was riding the boom like a horse and instantly, it was, there wasn't even time to think. Uh, I had fallen from the boom and I didn't have the wherewithal to grab onto anything. I was in the water at night. My headlamp had fallen from my head, so I was plunged into darkness. I was dragging through the water as the boat was, was charging along.
plunged into a sea temperature of just five degrees, Coleman was in one of the most remote places on Earth, the Southern Ocean. My leash was, was attached to the boom, which was above my head and out of my reach, and the boat was likewise out of my reach. Eventually, with the roll end of the boat, and a, a wave came and pushed me towards the, the side of the boat. Uh, I grabbed onto a stanchion uh, and pulled myself up onto the side of the boat. Um, however, I, I then had a problem with my leash that had once saved my life just three instants bef um, beforehand, was now stopping me from getting on board and getting into real safety. Um, and so I had this very perilous moment where in the dark I had to disconnect the harness, hanging on to just one stanchion, let the harness go and then finally climb into, into safety on the boat. That was terrifying. That, that's what gave me shell shock. My, my father was killed in an accident on a boat uh, in my first race around the world. I lost my crew member, Sam Goodchild, overboard, and it took me a long time, 30 minutes of, of searching in bad, bad conditions to get him back, during which time he was able to, to stay alive. And so it was really tough for me to be on the receiving end of that, uh, to find myself helpless in, in, in the water. Yet the story he told at the time was rather different. There had been no mention of his near miss. I had a pretty terrible night last night. I was taking a reef, one of the battens came disconnected from the mast and uh, unzipped the rest of the sail. Um, I managed to get the sail down, but uh, then the lazy jacks broke. And so now I have a mainsail that resembles nothing at all. Look at this. I didn't tell anybody about that. Well, I, I, I told one person. I called my boat captain, uh, Cyril, and because I, I had a very tangible need to talk to somebody, to say, this is what's just happened. I almost died. I, I need to talk about this. My mother is a widow of the sea, and my wife is already afraid of, of what I go through every day. And so I didn't see the need to, uh, to add to their suffering collectively. It was something that I had to just kind of keep bottled, bottled up inside me that uh, in turn reminded me that I needed to clip on every single day and not add too much more stress to, to the daily lives of my loved ones. It's terrible to hear that, but to be fair, when I don't hear about him for very long hours when he's got a problem, that's exactly where my mind goes. So, you know, I don't, I don't exactly need to know that it has happened to him. Even if it hadn't, I would have that same thing in my head. In addition to the support of his wife and shore crew, Conrad had another motivation to succeed. Uh, my younger brother committed suicide uh, just a couple of years ago. And uh, I, thought, I thought a lot about Andrew during this race. Um, not in so much that I felt his presence, but just that I, um, I wanted to show all of the other Andrews in the world uh, an example of never giving up because I, I was heartbroken by his decision. Uh, and, and by his circumstance that, 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 driv that had driven him to it. And yet, uh, everybody has really dark days. Uh, and sometimes there are lots of dark days lined up in a row and that can be really hard to deal with. Why is it that the worst days always have the best sunsets, huh? Look at that. It's an opportunity to show that we're possible of so much more than where we think. Um, and, and if that example can be useful for, for somebody, uh, and uh, then, then I'd be very, very touched and honoured by that and feel, and feel like my race had participated, uh, had contributed to, to something more than, than just a yacht race.
The thousands that lined the harbour entrance to greet him were proof that his trip had indeed been more than simply a story of a yacht race. At this stage, none, including his wife, had any idea of how close he'd come to disaster. Yet the candid way in which he told his story during his circumnavigation had made him a sailing celebrity. Conrad Coleman hadn't won the race, but he had survived every offshore sailor's nightmare. And to those that had witnessed his dogged determination, he was an inspiration. After the break, what's under the skin of the new America's Cup class boats? Plus, why the fin is in. But first, the Miami Super Series opened with a bang. And a huge crash. Stay with us for part two.